hello everyone welcome to my video on a2019 programming and today we are going to discuss a rpa challenge so what i have here with me is a website uh, the link is uh, https uh, http rpa challenge.com and this opens up a site which contains multiple interesting challenges so for the sake of this discussion we are going to deal with input forms now why is this a challenge every time you submit this button on the form so if you see the form there are multiple fields uh, company first name address phone number uh, last name email etc but every time you hit the submit on the form the format of the form the position of the fields and also the attributes the properties of these fields they are changing so hit submit and every time the form gives a new look a new sequence a new format and we need to capture that we need to enter text in these fields by clicking on submit so our code basically needs to identify the right field at the right position every time so how do we achieve that so uh, they have given a download excel uh, um, format over here i have already downloaded the excel to this so if you see the excel it has a table which contains first name last name company name role in the company address email phone number all these fields now the task is to go through the excel file in a loop and there are 10 records so you fill up the form 10 times so each loop you fill all the fields hit on submit and a new format of the form appears where you take a new record and fill in that form so that's the challenge now let's look at the properties which are changing so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to bring in a recorder capture select the application as rpa challenge in chrome and let's say capture the container which contains all these buttons and fields okay so let me do a get property of html inner text this is the field right click copy paste and we put that in a variable prompt assignment now let's log to file and let's create a text file so log to file basically uh, dumps any sort of text into either a text file or a csv file so let me just create a file log.txt copy the entire path and put it in the file path and the text that we need to log is the text that we just captured in prompt assignment and every time we do that we override the existing file we don't want to append the same file again and again now uh, let's see what happens so let me just run the code and it's run successfully so now the log.txt is populated with the inner html of the container that we captured okay i'm sorry i think i just captured inner text i should have captured inner html let me just go back to my property app it's inner text let me just expand this yep this is the inner html this is what we need save it and run this again okay so it's done again now i just reload the file and i can see that the inner html has populated let me just format this in a proper way okay so you can see the fields here last name is over here that's under a label and the text box is right here it's input control similarly we have email over here followed by a text box phone number and the remaining fields now to understand the challenge let's click on the submit button once so the format changes and let's capture this one more time so before we do that let me just take a copy of this because the log.txt file will be replaced 
let me take a copy of this and paste it here as a backup to compare now let us run the code one more time okay go back to our file reload the log.txt file format it to show it properly and you can see the same fields again but the sequence has now changed so earlier last name was at the top but if you go to the new file the first name is at top even if you see the id of the input for input text so this is the text box field the input field the id here says lxshi whereas our initial id for what is the field name first name so if we look for first name the id was completely different and if i try to find this id in this page copy this go back paste it it doesn't exist so basically this id field is a random string that is created every time the submit button is hit similarly the name field so the sequence is changing and the attributes the key attributes is changing by which we could identify this field in a record capture action uh, the way the technique of doing this that we're going to discuss in this video is via string operation what we are going to do is we're going to take the outer html of this entire container so if you go back to your previous file and compare the first line you see that the first line attributes don't change so what we are going to do is we're going to take the inner html of the container which doesn't change and then we are going to locate the id fields of each of these labels so last name what is the id field email what is the id field so dynamically we are going to retrieve the id of each of these fields and then we are going to do a set text using this id let's see how that works so let me just keep the files open so the first thing i'm just going to delete this and bring in a fresh record to cap recorder capture go to application refresh RPA challenge capture object and we're going to capture the outer box which contains not only the text fields but also the submit button so that's it now we capture the content once again we take the inner HTML get property inner html okay did i not copy it properly and we put this to prompt assignment save it now let's look at the container prop carefully what do we actually need from the container first of all we need the field name which you're going to update so every field has a label and the text box let me go back to the website so if you see every field has a label and a corresponding text box so since the values are changing since the position is changing we don't know which field would be at the top unless we read the label so any container that we come to we first need to read the label to identify the field name and then correspondingly come and read the id field of the text box next to the label so how do we do that now in our code we have taken the entire inner html in a prompt assignment string so prompt assignment as of now contains this entire text let's see if we can split this anyway so the first thing we notice is this string label ng content hyphen c2 equal to double quote double quote now if we do a search of this field we see that the field exists for every label in the page so the first thing we do is we split our string with this field with the string copy this now we bring in a string split 
our source string is prompt assignment and our delimiter is the string by which we are splitting it. It is not case sensitive, we need all possible values and we store that in a list variable lst1. Now save it and we run a loop search for list for each item in a list. Choose our list, all items in the list, choose a variable. Let's bring the variable back to prompt assignment. So what we're doing is we're not creating one more variable, we're just reusing our earlier variable. Since we have already split the string, and everything is in the list, we don't need the prompt assignment anymore. So we're just reusing it. Now the prompt assignment contains for each item in the list. So when the list gets split, when the actual string gets split, then everything before this string becomes one element and everything after that string till the next string becomes one element. So this is the second element, this is the first element and so on. So this becomes our delimiter. Okay, now we have our loop for each item in the list and we have the value in prompt assignment. What do we need to do with this value? So let's go back to the inner HTML and see what is the value that we captured in prompt assignment. So for the first record, this is the value that comes before this string. So in this value, we don't have anything. We don't uh, have any labels. We don't have any text boxes. So we're just going to ignore this. The second element contains this. Now, this is starting from this delimiter till the next delimiter. In between, this is the second element. Now, the first thing it contains in the beginning is the label name. So this is how we identify what is the field we are entering the data for. In this case, this is last name. And right next to that is the input and the ID field. So now we need to extract the label name and the ID field for, from this string. So how do we do that? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to split this entire string with this as the delimiter. The moment we split this with this as the delimiter, then the first element will be the label name, which is last name, and the remaining elements will be over here. Let's see how that happens. So for that, we are not going to do a split again. We are just going to do a string extract. And we are going to say our source string is, of course, prompt assignment. And we need the string after which this appears. Let me just put that in one line. Okay. So if you've seen my previous videos in string operation, the way extract text works is you need to put some string either before or after and that identifies your required string. So if my required string is last name, so prompt assignment contains this string as of now. So this is the starting and this is the ending. So if I have to identify last name, I cannot identify by something that is existing before that because this is the first string. But I can identify by what is followed by this string, which is label and input. So moment I put, uh, moment I put after label input, the system is going to search the entire prompt string for any string which is followed by these two statements. And that will become our field name. Let's go for a different example. If I come to the email field name, that is also followed by label input. Similarly, for phone number, we have label input. So this is the way we can extract the label name. So what we do here is we find out the string that is followed by this. If no match found, we return an empty string. We get all the characters, we trim the characters, and we assign the characters to a field, a variable called field label. I already created the variable for you. The variable is str field label. So in this variable, we store the field label. So our first requirement is done. We have found the field name. Our next requirement is to find the ID of the text box 
corresponding to that field name. How do we do that? Okay, so let's bring in one more extract text. Once again, our source string is dollar prompt assignment. Now let's find out how to identify this ID. So if your string is this entire string, you need to find this ID field right here. The best way to do this in this case is to find a string which is after ID equal to double quotes and before double quote space name equal to double quote. You will see that there is no other string in this substring which satisfies this condition. So that's what we are going to do here. We are going to do extract text before and after. So our preceding text is this. Occurrence is 1, so we are getting the first occurrence. And our following text is this. Once again, first occurrence. Similarly, we choose every other option and we go for str input ID. So now we have captured both the field name and the ID of the text box field. Let's see if our capture, let's see if our extract text has worked fine or not. So let me just put a message box right here. And in the message box, I'm going to display first variable is str field label. And the next variable is str input id. Save it. Now, along with that, I'm also going to put a condition to check for blanks. And I say if string condition str input id not equal to blank. Why did we do this? Because if you remember in our initial string when we split by the label container, so in this case the label container is here, the initial element of the form and the header did not contain any kind of text box or labels. So we need to ignore this field. This will never have any text or anything. It's just the form header and the container header. We can ignore that. So we have put so in when the loop is processing for this field, it will not find any input ID, it will not find any label ID. So we have put this condition if the string is not null. Only then show the message box. Let's run this code and see. So this is our form right now. Okay, let's keep it for now. Run. So the first field it found is address, which is this. The second field it found is first name right here. And along with that, it's also showing the ID value of the text box. Similarly, we have last name, then phone number, then role in company, email, company name, and that's all. So the important part of our task is already achieved. We have found the field name and we have found the ID of the text box next to that field. Okay, so let's remove this message box now. Now let's go back to our initial requirement. We are supposed to loop through this file and go for each of the records. So what we do is in the beginning we do a Excel advanced open statement. Select text of file. Copy the file name. Put the file name here. Uh, let's mention the specific sheet name we're going to hit, which is sheet 1. Read only mode. Sheet contains a header. Session is default. Okay. Now, oops, sorry, we need to go back to Excel Advanced and do a get worksheet as data table. We go with the active worksheet, sheet contains a header, go for cell value, and our session name is default. Now, 
we need to create a table variable tbl sheet data okay so this loop loops through all the fields in the web form we need to create a outer loop to loop through all the fields in the excel sheet all the records in the excel sheet so we bring in one more loop statement and in this case we go for a data table each row in a data table our data table is tbl sheet data and we create a record variable to contain the data contain each record sheet data rcd sheet data okay save it we collapse the second loop and bring the entire loop inside the first one so let's understand the structure now we are going to do a record capture of the entire form split the form with delimiter this to bring it to a list next we are going to do an open excel file and get the entire worksheet as a data table now we have a list we have a data table first we are going to loop through the data table for each record in the data table we are going to loop through our list and populate the fields okay so right inside this if condition we need to put a statement for populating the data in the text box so first we need to identify which field we are going to populate from this excel sheet because whether it's the first name or last name or company name that depends on what is the label that we have captured now if you see the headers in this excel sheet are exactly same as the field names we have address right here first name right here last name right here phone number right here similarly we have role in company and email role in company and email right here and company name is right here so whatever field we have captured whatever label we have captured inside the loop we can very easily tag that label to our record set and that will extract the value from the data table let's see how that works so what we are going to do is recorder capture bring it inside the if condition our application is once again rpa challenge google chrome now we capture any field just for getting the initial set of properties and then we change the properties so we captured a sample text box now what we are going to do is our input remains same domex worth we don't need html id is the one thing that we are going to change so in place of html id we will put the variable that we have captured in the loop which is str input id this is fine this is fine we'll remove the path since it's a web application come down go for a set text and in this text we are going to take the data that we've captured from the excel sheet as part of a record set now our variable for record is let's put f2 rcd sheet data now it is asking for which column to capture you can put the column by index or put by name we can put in this case we can go for name because the field names that we have captured from the web page are matching exactly with our headers in the excel table so we go with our variable which is str label if i remember correctly let me go back and check the variable name str field label sorry so str field label so that becomes our record set now as of now we have not captured the submit button uh, let's see how this works so we are going to learn the first iteration of the loop and then we are going to just do a loop break so we are not hitting the submit button as of now this is just to check if our capture is working fine run the code
for some reason it just populated one field and it skipped the other fields let me just go back and see the error message key last name not found in record why is the last name not found is there a space yeah so that's the reason there was a trading space in the field name let me just take care of that space over here I don't think there is any space in any let me just run the code again and just save the file close the file and just uh, click on submit to bring in a new format and run our code again perfect so this time the code is successfully run if you go back to the web page you see that we did not click on the submit button but at least one round of form entry is already done let's match it with our excel the first record john smith it solutions analyst 98 north road this is the email id j smith and the phone number go back to the file it solution phone number 407 john smith 98 north, north road analyst and j smith is the email account so which means that our data is captured properly and it's getting populated properly. Now we need to do this in a loop by clicking on the submit button. So we just bring in a new format, go back to our code. So this inner loop takes care of filling up the text boxes. So once the inner loop is completed and all the text boxes are filled, this time we don't break the loop. We just click on the submit button. So let's bring in a record capture. This is outside the inner loop, but inside the outer loop. Now, RPA challenge, capture object, submit, wait for the red box to come. Yes, it has come now. Click on it. And the submit is captured. So we have tags, Tomex path. Let's Remove the DOM path, go with something static like class, type is submit, remove the path, let's keep the role, and the action is click. So this time, all the seven or eight fields are getting populated with their values, and then the button will be clicked. The next time the form loads in a different format, a new record will be picked up from the outer loop from the excel table so in that way all the seven records should get populated let's see it in action close this file there's something that i missed that i need to do is excel advanced close so once you open the excel and get everything in a data table you don't need the excel open anymore you can just close it we don't need to do save changes because we opened in read only mode save it and let's go to okay this is fine let's run the code and see it in action the first form is getting filled up submit is clicked Okay, so there's one very silly mistake in the code, which is once we fill up all the fields in a form and we click on the submit button, it goes back to the loop and it tries to capture the IDs of the new form, but we never get the IDs because that part of the code is outside. So I need to bring that inside. So we'll just bring these two statements of capturing the form and splitting the form inside the main loop. Okay, I think it should work now. Save it. The form is in the right place. Let's run the code again. second time second form is done the third form completed there's the fourth form completed 
and there's a fifth form done six done seventh completed eighth ninth so somehow it was populating blank records so I think I know the reason why uh, I think this excel sheet has some blank records that we need to get rid of so I'll just select the entire row control shift and right click and delete do the same for the columns just to do a cleanup so sometimes excel remembers the formatting done on the blank cell and treats them as data records so we'll just save the file close it and run this maybe for the last time okay so we have started the first form completed second form completed third completed fourth completed fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth this should be the tenth form done and it's a successful run so we saw how to use string operations here to identify forms or elements in a form which are dynamically changing their properties this is one way of handling such a case there is another way with the uh, xpath which i am going to discuss in the next video hope this was helpful thank you